I'm really excited to to uh, be here and uh, and want to welcome all the Justin TV folks out there watching. Okay, and we have uh, Jerome Lacotte here is uh, is here from Scality. So we have another another executive here from the, the show floor, um, Scality. Welcome to the Cube. Hi. Jerome's the CEO of, uh, yes, of, of Scality. Uh, do you have a card actually so we can give it to our folks to? No, I gave I, I gave it to like, no okay. he's Ricky's okay. all set. Rose, he's Ricky's all set. All right, we good. We, good. Set. we got it. Jerome, so uh, tell us how are things and. Uh, What's up with Scality? Tell us, you know, what are you, what are you doing here? Tell us about the company. Still healthy on the rundown. third day of the show. Obviously, didn't have any moment for lunch. <laughs> Start having a smile. Do you have a camera here? Where's the camera? Hi, camera. Hi, everyone. Okay, doing well. Okay, what can I answer? So, you? tell us about Scality. What's uh, so what's Scality up? What's is a storage system. Uh, we're a company doing an organic, object-based, cloud-style storage system for a very large deployment of unstructured objects. Um, it's a um, growing market. Uh, unstructured object is the largest part of the storage growth, 70% growth a year, according to IDC. And um, we're a real company with real customers, not just the slideware. I like to mention this because some others, you know, they come up with they new stuff. They hype up their stuff and they don't have really anything to deliver. So, so you can actually meet our customers and they'll talk about it. So I get an object and I get a cloud style. We can talk more about it. What do you mean by organic? Organic, yeah. It's an interesting term. It has connotations associated with it. So what do you mean by organic? Well, actually, I'm referring to this connotation. So it's obviously a metaphor that uh, refers to the way uh, living Animals and humans are made uh, out of organs, which themselves are made out of cells. And what's really interesting when you think about an organ in the living realm is that the organ will continue functioning and will function over years when the lifetime of the cell is actually a few months or a few years, but not as long. And what happens is the organ is not affected at all by cell attrition so if there's a cell that die it doesn't matter because the new cells are uh, they rejuvenate uh, yeah, yeah rejuvenate all the time also after a few months the complete organ has been changed although it's still been functioning and it's um, it's new cell but it's the same organ okay so the same way we're doing a storage system where it's distributed over many different components typically x86 servers very standard uh, and the way it's built, if any server dies or if any disk dies, it really doesn't matter. It's not going to impact the functioning of the system. Over a few years, you're going to have a complete technology refresh without having to go through any kind of migration. So it makes it much easier to deploy a system over a 10, 20 years lifespan without having to do heavy maintenance. So the business value of this organicity is no rip and replace ever. Correct. Right, no, uh, no disruption to the application yeah. ever. Yeah, we deployed our first customer in June 2010, so that's about nine months ago now. There's been absolutely no stop of the service, okay? And it's been really easy to maintain, nothing really, I mean, you know, it's not that the, the system maintains its integrity all the time. And through this time, since June 2010, we've done software upgrade. We've actually completely changed the architecture, the way we mounted the hard drive. Initially, it was RAID 6, now it's JBOD. And all this with no service disruption, not even a scheduled maintenance. Interesting. All right. So, Scality, when, uh, tell us more about the company. Can we, can we give us company a Company was uh, started, the project was started in uh, 2008 when we went to see our customers of the time in a different company and asked them what they would like us to build. And they basically said a new type of storage system that would be good for what people want to store, like their stuff, whether it's their email, their video files, their media files. Um, so, 2008 is the beginning of the development period. Um, it was spun off out of a previous company, which was called Bizonga, in February 2010, and it's an independent company since then. Okay, so this, this, the, when, when you spun out, that provided the, the essentially the, the capital? And, yeah. Um, uh, so so we, did you do a raise? Or? Yeah, we raised $6 million at the time. We've raised another $7 million uh, last month, so a total of $13 million. We still have the $7 million in the bank. We're pretty uh, efficient on capital. We've got 18 months ahead of us, and um, looking good. CEO, that's you know the C stands for, right? Cheap, cheap executive officer. That's what. Yeah, Scott when you're a startup, you gotta be, gotta be <laughs> lean. lean. You can't overspend. What they say, the secret of business is to don't don't run out of money. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's really simple when you boil it down to that, isn't it? No, no, no one died out of little sales. People die out of being out of cash. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, so tell us what's, what's the innovation going on right now for, in your mind about this show? Uh, can you share with the folks out there kind of what you're seeing in the trends, independent of your company, just the mega trends that support uh, your growth? Well, you know, obviously, um, th th there's this whole hype about cloud. But if I look beyond the hype, beyond, beyond the word cloud, what it is, um, I see two things. I see um, enterprise users expecting to have the same kind of IT in the enterprise as they have at home. You know, at home they have their iPad and their iPhone and everything works very well together. And it's just easy to go on Facebook. It's easy now to drive your TV from your iPhone. I mean, all this just works really well. And then they go to their enterprise and they still have pretty old software in terms of design. And it's just not easy. Okay, so that's one mega trend. It's yeah. the, the, the change on the demand from the IT user. Not necessarily the IT department yet, yeah, yeah. but this is going to ch to push the IT department to unhappy change. people. So essentially, yeah, it's yeah. complex okay. and so, so a, it's a crappy environment. Basically, a drive for simplicity. Yeah, really, basically, um, and this is going to drive uh, a real shift in the way applications are designed. You're going to see more and more business applications that look like Facebook. You know, they're not going to be consumer applications, they're going to be uh, business applications, but they'll look like this. And then the second thing is what I just alluded to earlier, is just the immense growth of unstructured data. You know, more and more in businesses, people scan documents and install the scan, or they produce uh, PDF images of their bills, and they don't ever send an actual paper bill to their consumers. You know, it's now considered uh, not environmentally, not environmentally healthy to send paper bills. So people to comply with what consumer demands, they just give up on paper bills. Mm. And this drives a growth for more and more multimedia files being stored in the enterprise world. And that's a complete revolution. It, it's just a very different problem to solve for storage companies. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and video. Absolutely. We know this problem. And, and yes. It's a key and, you have a scale and, and problem. And soon you're going to be HD and then 3D HD and you know We did HD. We stopped doing it because the video files were too big. Well, okay. I mean, we couldn't store them all. And then also some of the internet connections at the places although it's a good maybe, one. Maybe maybe we should talk about business. <laughs> I'm do a barter deal. Okay. Um, some space for some uh, promotion. Um, now, uh, in your world right now, okay, true or false? Um, people are going to make a lot of money with cloud. True. Okay, true or false? Um, Oracle's evil. False. <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> true. Okay. Good answer. Why we see what CEO is going to say? You know, uh, yeah, on, yeah, we on. love Except Oracle. for we EMC. Oracle. No, Oracle, Oracle will EMC continue will. paying high price for companies no, like not us. Evil. So I, I, they have a good M&A department. So yeah, they we do love Oracle, evil, but they're not evil. That's they're not evil. <laughs> they're not evil. <laughs> Yeah, it's a Google, you know, the Google joke is, you know, don't, do don't evil, be evil. Man. But, you know, you know, so we talk a lot about Oracle. But but the, the role of databases, can you comment about databases? Sure, and, sure. And, you yeah. know, we talk about that all week long about yeah, databases. Databases are going to change. Okay. And Oracle will change as well, by the way. Um, uh, you know, the, the concept of relational database was invented, what, 30, 40 years ago now? It's a great concept. Okay. We all learned this at school. It's a great concept. Um, the more people deploy database, the more they realized, okay, Relational is great, but if you really apply it strictly, it has some limitation. It's really complex. Yeah. Like tables. And, <laughs> and just the join and how many yeah. tables you need yeah. to join before you really have your vision. Good for what it did. For what, you know. Again, you know, invented 30, 40 years ago, did a great job. Some people will continue using this. But there are many applications who need something much more simple. They essentially need, they essentially need an, an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> you know, they need multiple columns, multiple rows, they need to be able to add a full row, which is not always obvious with every NoSQL database out there. Okay, so they, they still, most people, they don't want just one column. They want multiple column and to be able to add a full row. Okay, and um, we're actually going to introduce uh, a distributed database technology on top of our storage technology by the end of this year. And what's the exciting part about that, the, the change in databases, especially the NoSQL area? Because there's been a lot of debate around which approaches should go there. Obviously, there's, people talk about structured, unstructured, that's clear. But what's going on in the unstructured world? It's kind of like a silent little cold war going on. So, the Hadoop wars are kicking up. 
Um, you're seeing a lot more, you know, so stuff t- happening. T- 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 terms are really funny, okay? So people talk about unstructured data and they talk about no SQL database. Okay. First, the real problem about storing unstructured data is that there needs to be structure to the storage, <laughs> okay? If you have no structure, you have garbage. Okay, so the term unstructured data, I mean, I use it because this is the way everyone It's like big data, it's a, it's a hype things. term. But it's a categorical term. Really, I mean, when yeah. we think about our software, when we think about development and, and you know, long term, mm-hmm. it's all a question of how do you achieve efficient structure for what people want to do? And database are not the efficient structure for large amount of multimedia files, okay? But you still need indexes. You still need thing, functionalities like being able to do search through the whole data. I believe that in 10 years' time, it's going to be normal to do a scene selection automatically in a video. I'll be able to go through your video file and say, bring me all the videos of Jerome LeCat, and not you know, looking at the fact that you tagged it well, but actually the software will look at the video, do face recognition, and bring me the pieces I want. Okay? We could use that technology you yesterday. Have that? Yeah, because it's, you know, it's not quite ready yet. You know, we that's do, the kind you know, of we thing do, we're building. We, we literally transcript our videos so that we have that capability. It's a yeah, very brute force, but it works. There's nothing Absolutely. else, and there's no. We have yeah. no other choice. Yeah, yeah. So that okay. would be ha, ha, a good barter. Deal. Have you tried doing uh, voice recognition on the videos? Not yet. We um, are talking to a cool startup in San Francisco, we, though, about that. And we and we've used voice recognition for the transcription. So okay. sort of so indirectly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But these are the tech challenges. Like these these new use cases are not necessarily new to the sense of how people have done business in the past. Just from a tech, technology standpoint, these things need to be cataloged because there's need for the new data types. We call them unstructured. Call them you know web app needs email address and handle, which is might be one major data source they need versus the old model which was tabular you know my um, SQL databases relational and, and you know what 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 keeps me motivated every morning is the fact that we can bring this to the industry mm-hmm. and what else is going on in your world so tell us uh, um, uh, you know what's happening um, from the company standpoint I mean, how many employees do you guys have? Oh, from a company standpoint, sorry. Uh, I was still talk, uh, thinking uh, industry standpoint. Okay. I'm um, getting a little slow. So it's the end of the day. We've been two days, <laughs> hours yeah, of interviews. Get fire up because we've got Rob Pegler coming on. And Rob is like rapid fire. Oh, you God, know, okay. No, I actually yeah. don't. Okay. <laughs> so how many employees uh, do you have? What's so going we, on with the company, we were business twi- model? We were 20 at the beginning of the year. We are 30 now. We're going to be 40 at the end of the year. So it's a fast-paced growing company. Uh, we've just opened an office in New York for U.S. sales. We uh, have recruited people for customer services based on the East Coast as well. So we, we've essentially staffed up the U.S. West Coast? Um, Pres- East Coast, East Coast. Anything I'm, out here? Uh, the, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm here. CEO is here. And uh, we run the finance and marketing from here. So the company is really run from here. Um, originally, we put the U.S. sales uh, here in San Francisco. And we realized that our guys were on plane absolutely every week because most of our customers are on the East Coast. So we've just uh, moved the office over there. So it's in New York. Um, we also have R&D in Paris, uh, offices in um, Germany for the German market. And we cover um, the European market from Paris and, um, and Germany. And we have a master distributor in Japan. So still relatively small, but very global Pretty business. Global for that size. And, um, you know, that, that's the nature of the world today. It's a global business. Um, How many customers do you have? We have a dozen customers. They're all service providers, so very large contract for each customer, not a very large number of customers. We're focusing solely on service providers for this year because they are higher maturity, and essentially what that means is they have higher pain. <laughs> so yeah. because they have And they got some money, pain, they've got a business to run. Enterprise not an R&D. money too, but enterprise, basically can still get by with um, SAN and NAS technology. Service providers are getting to a point where it's not profitable for them to run some of their services so, with these. So you companies. see the whole object piece is, is really being adopted in the service providers first. They're sort of demanding it. Yes. Right? Yes. More so than the enterprises, right? And let's face yes. it, the enterprises are not screaming for object storage, right? It's not as urgent, it's not as painful, so they can yeah. still get by. Yeah. They will They will get there, they will have to get there just because the same laws of the amount of objects they store will happen. I mean, the, the problem when you, when you reach about a billion objects, 
any kind of file system technology becomes very cumbersome to manage. You need to associate volumes to a num uh, some number of objects, or you need to have some global namespace technology. Anyway, it's cumbersome to manage. We bring simplicity to that world. What do you think, I mean, let's, let's talk about the object store landscape for a minute. I mean, sure. you, you got EMC Atmos. You know? Okay. Any, any thoughts there? Uh, you, got, you got CleverSafe, it's an mm -hmm. interesting job. You got uh, Nirvonix in the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, you got uh, Bycast now part of NetApp. Yep. Um, so we got a bunch of public cloud guys. I'm sure I'm missing a few prominent okay. ones. But. Okay, so we, we need to differentiate here those who provide a service like Nirvanix yeah. and those who provide technology like Atmos. Yes, yeah, so, okay. so let's talk about so, the technology because okay. that's really what that's, you guys That's what do. we yeah. do, exactly. I mean, our customers provide service. Yeah. So on the technology side, um, so Atmos doesn't seem to have so much steam in the market. And all I can say about Atmos is that we have never run into a scenario where we had to compete against Atmos. So really? they seem to be selling, but I don't know where. Yeah, they, um, ha they, have, they have more than 12 customers. I mean, I, but they're EMC, so they better have more than 12 um, customers. So that, that, that's about Atmos. Um, about CleverSafe and AmpliData, we think that these are awesome technologies. They're really great for long-term storage of, la of large yeah. piece of data, and yeah. they're great, okay? Um, they are not good for primary storage, especially if you have a mix match of small piece of data and big piece of data. Um, so we're actually considering partnering with them for the long-term storage because they, they really have some very nice feature. Yeah, they really but, do. But yeah. as a primary storage, and which Chris is where is really we really smart, Chris Glenn, the, absolutely, and he's CEO. been in this industry for like seven years now. I mean, he knows it inside out and. Seriously, the, their, their software, their design is super good. Mm. No, no question asked. Okay, um, it's just a different focus. Yeah, you're right. I mean, they're not they're, they're not a performance oriented, you know, store. We we, we can uh, guarantee that in average we bring uh, object back in 40 milliseconds. Yeah, okay. Th that, that's yeah, not that's their not their business. deal. Their deal is longer term archiving, yeah. and of course, their the, the way in which they've built in inherent security is quite interesting. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay, good. So that's a partnership opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that, that helps us clarify sort of where you guys fit. That's good. All right, Jerome, well, listen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Okay. It was a pleasure learning about Scality and uh, appreciate you uh, being on here. Thank you very much for the invitation.